to uh, take over oh, 10, 10, 10 or is that the score? <laughs> that really well. um, we have enough time for uh, questions. If, if anybody would like to um, ask a question, we have a microphone over there. Okay, so now we can uh, not like a to shout. Um, if anybody has a question for our uh, distinguished uh, I'm not surprised. I don't know. The oh, there's one. Uh, where can we read the Where, the question is, where can we read the oral stories? How would we access Okay, um, Google is great. So if you just, um, what would you like to know? If you would like to know folk tales, yeah. but if you want to be specific, like Indian folk tales, Punjabi, Gujarati folk tales, just Google very specifically. And uh, a lot of things are archived online for free. But the danger is to be able to look at the references and bibliography and sources. You, you should be able to know that in the story they mention things like cars, tractors, cameras, and watches. That's rubbish. <laughs> that is not a folk tale. Yeah. Of course, libraries, anthologies. Um, libraries are limited in the US. Certain publications have a very good <coughs> reputation for having archived and documented all traditional stories. Hi, um, you know, I was just thinking about um, all of you spoke about experiences and getting to share experiences, getting to raise and uh, perhaps share experience with people. Uh, and it's a different kind of subject for each one of you because you, you there's a Nova and there's a um, performance based storytelling is every aspect of it. Um, I was just wondering as storytellers, do you um, do you often think about how your art of storytelling is consumed and whether there's a risk of that getting lost in the retelling of it um, by other people? Um, and I wonder if that if your if your art of storytelling uh, at some point, you know, you feel threatened by it, or I mean, or do you enjoy the process of it being uh, in other costumes? Uh, um, so very quickly on that, um, when, when my book came out, it was serialized, so you know, fantasy down into, and um, it was serialized by the Daily Mail, which is not an newspaper that I would choose to be <laughs> um, And so I thought, oh my God, what is this? You know, you know. <laughs> They can only do what they can do with what they have, right? But my God, they managed to do a lot to that extract. And I read that and thought, please, you know, don't let my parents see it. And, uh, and of course they did. So that was, that was one thing. But then another thing that happened was that my book was booked at the week on Radio 4. And so that, then again, that was edited down again. So somebody else is making choices that they turn 85,000 words into 15,000 words. But what was really interesting about that process was that um, there's a memoir, so it's been read a lot of the radio. Book. I had to audition for the role of myself to read the book about myself that I'd written for myself. Um, and I got a phone call from my agent, she's like, you're down to the last three. And I was like, right, who are the other two people? You know. Um, so, so that was great, and yeah, I did, I did get the job, but that was also quite weird because it's, it, you're, you're reading, it made it very real in a different way. And now my book is going to be adapted to be a TV series. And that's another process because TV is a very different demand than, than radio, or right? it's a medium all of its own. But not, not documentary series. No, no, a drama, a drama. So it's gonna be it's gonna be based on you know, based on my book, based on the world of all. And then they and I I went into a meeting and they said, Should we like it to be uh returning the series, you know, like shameless uh it was three seasons season or something? I said, My book, my book is season one, they were like, We'll make it up after that. <laughs> So, you know, I'm curious. So, I, have to let that go. I think it's very useful to let it go. I mean, I think, I think you have to either say, no, you, you cannot buy the rights to my book, and or, and there were people that I could say no to. Like, there were publishers that I said no to who wanted to publish my book in a certain way. Um, some, some publishers wanted it to be like a kind of essay <coughs> memoir. They wanted to have a crying child on the, on the jacket. I didn't want that. So, you know, so if you have control as a storyteller, you can say no. And then the reason I said yes to the TV thing is because it's, to me, television is currently more exciting than narrative form than film. There's more going on 
Orange County. Um, I knew, for example, Orange is a new black, is a brilliant memoir, which is adapted to the film on Netflix. And you know, her life uh, in the book, and uh, now there's in the new series. So I think you just have to let, kind of let it go and not be precious about it. And, um, but you know, we'll be readers when they make up season two of my dream. My mother did that. It might be, it might be better. Might be. Uh, <laughs> might be. Oh, yeah. So, can we also, um, I was just curious about how you do as a performance. Yes, so something that they did is that you have to say no for the things that no, no permission granted. Nobody in the audience has the right to retell this, edit it, write it, print it, whatever. But that goes back to working very closely with the organizer or the entity or the institution that I'm coming into. If they do not understand that protocol, I will not tell that I can story. Um, I go back to the people that I mentor and teach. By all means, tell the stories that are free for you to tell. But please don't copy and imitate and mimic and just photo copy the whole set, scan me. Find your style. Finding the style is the hardest thing for storytelling. It's easy to copy Steve Jobs. We only have a, a couple of minutes left, so I, I'm, I'm not going to take any more questions. I'll wrap up with these fine people. Um, I'd like to ask 